What's going on guys? Welcome to Rob's house. Switching gears today, we're doing something a little bit different. It's time for another PC build. I saw I got, you know, some views and comments on my Hackintosh build for uh, my editing system, which is still running great. But today it's time to upgrade my gaming rig. Now I've been gaming for the last seven years on my old gaming machines, actually right over here in my office, which is kind of messy, so I'm not gonna show you guys that. On uh, my old rig, which is a Ryzen 7 1800X CPU, 32 gig of RAM system with a Titan XP graphics card. I built this around 2017, back when all of those components were brand new top of the line stuff. The computer has done me well for the last seven years, but it's just starting to show its age a little bit, and I'd like to take advantage of some of the newer features that graphics cards have to offer in particular, like ray tracing uh, and DLSS on NVIDIA graphics cards. So with that said, we're gonna do a full new build today. Behind me, I have all my components. Let's go through it all. So everything is gonna be housed in this awesome Corsair 4000D RGB case. Uh, this is actually the same case that I used for the Hackintosh build, although the Hackintosh, I did a white case because I wanted to kind of have that Apple theme going on. For the gaming rig, it's blacked out. It's got three RGB fans in the in the front of the case. It actually does not come with a rear fan pre-installed, so I went, and I went ahead and grabbed another Corsair 120 RGB Elite fan, which is the same fan that they have installed in the front of the case as well. So that'll all match. Everything's gonna be RGB, of course, uh, and, and synced up. The case does come with a controller. With that said, let's go over the rest of the components. So first of all, the CPU I went with for this machine is an AMD Ryzen, another, it's the current gen Ryzen 9 CPU. They've gone through a few iterations. I believe this is the Zen 4 architecture, I think. I haven't really been keeping up with this stuff much over the years. My 1800X is the Zen 1, but this is the Ryzen 9 7950X CPU. It's a 16 core, 32 thread, high performance CPU. It's 170 watt, if I remember correctly. There is one model that is more expensive in the Ryzen 9 line, and that's the 7950X 3D, which has some kind of efficiency core optimization for gaming, if I remember correctly, but it was another $100, and benchmarking-wise, it only showed on average about a 4% increase in performance. I didn't really think that that was worth a 20% price increase personally, because I was able to get this, this 7950X, it was on sale a little bit, so I got it for $550. The 3D version was $650, so I didn't really want to spend another 100 bucks on that. I didn't really think that it was worth it. And of course, we have to keep that cool somehow, so I got a Cooler Master Master Liquid ML240L V2 ARGB. This cooler is the same cooler that I used in the Hackintosh build, actually. It is ARGB, where uh, all my fans are just regular RGB, but my motherboard has both ARGB and RGB headers, so I don't think we're gonna have any problems there. I didn't have any problems with my Hackintosh. It has the exact same fans and the exact same cooler, and they sync up just fine on the main board, so I'm really not too worried about that at all. Going on with the RGB theme, you gotta have some G-Skill, Trident Z RGB DDR5 RAM for this system, and we have 128 gigabytes of it. So these are 32 gig sticks, and I got two packs of them, so we're gonna load this thing up with RAM. My main board can actually handle 196 gigabytes, uh, so we won't have a problem here. Here I have my copy of Windows. I'm gonna put that aside. I don't know why, but for some reason, buying a Windows key with the disk was cheaper than digital delivery, so I bought the disk. Don't ask me why, but that's that's why. Anyway, I could just download Windows Home and put it on a USB too. It doesn't really matter how you install it. Really, all that matters is that you have the serial number. All right, so so how are we gonna power this thing? Well, I got a Rosewell CS1000M, uh, 80 plus gold certified, 1000 watt modular power supply with the new PCIe 5.0, 12 volt high power connector as well. That will become relevant in just one minute. Before we get there, we have to store everything somewhere and that's where our two terabyte M.2 drive comes in on uh, from Western Digital. And moving over here, I actually got an open box uh, main board here. This is an Asus TUF Gaming X670E Plus Wi-Fi motherboard. The main thing I was looking for here was that I have some M.2 space and that I have a PCI 5.0 bus for my graphics card because they're still selling a lot of the Socket AM5 
motherboards still have PCIe 4. So I wanted to make sure that I had PCIe 5. I know that the um, Master Liquid Cooler works with the AM5 socket as well. So we should have no problems installing all this stuff. And of course, to top off this entire rig, we need a graphics card. So I had to go and buy the RTX 4090 from NVIDIA. Very excited to see what this thing can do. Heard a lot about it since launch. And also full disclosure, I don't know if I've actually ever mentioned this on the channel before. I work for NVIDIA. So obviously I had to buy an NVIDIA GPU, right? Full full disclaimer there, full bias on display. I work there. So obviously I'm gonna buy an NVIDIA GPU. And I had to get the biggest, baddest GPU that we make. So the RTX 4090 coming in hot and uh, we'll do we'll do a, a benchmark run later, see what kind of frames we get. Uh, like I said, I've been gaming on my old machine with a Titan XP, so I actually haven't even been able to experience the ray tracing or DLSS with the upscaling feature using machine learning to kind of fill in the frames and, and give you a better picture quality. I haven't got to mess with that. I haven't got to mess with RTX broadcast, which I'm super excited about. I haven't got to play with any of that stuff because my home rig is so old. This is a classic case of the mechanic at the performance shop building all these sweet cars and just driving some beater out in the parking lot because he just doesn't have time to work on his own stuff. That is me. I actually really haven't been gaming that much. Over the course of the last year, I've been playing uh, more console games, but recently uh, me and my buddies have started to pick up PC gaming again. So I was like, man, it's time for a new rig. It's been seven years. You guys know how that gets with, with PC stuff. Stuff goes out of style pretty quick. So I think, I think the time had come. I'm really, really excited to do this build, and I figured I'd take you, take you guys along for the ride. This should be a pretty sweet looking system. When all said and done, I'll show you everything lighting up, RGB fans, the cooler, the RAM, rear fan, and then of course the RTX 4090, which is absolutely massive, by the way. If you guys haven't seen the new um, 40 series cards, it is a three slot card, and it protrudes out quite a bit. There is included, it's actually behind the GPU, there's a, there's a little thing with an adapter in it. So now, what I mentioned before is that this power supply has the PCIe 5 12 volt high power connector. If you don't have this connector, uh, because that's the connector that the 4080 and 4090s use on uh, NVIDIA GPUs, um, that's okay, you actually don't need it. NVIDIA will provide, it, NVIDIA provides an adapter that comes with the GPU. It's actually, if I move my GPU here, I'd have to pull this thing out, but there's a there's a little like box back here that has the adapter in it. So anyway, um, I just wanted I just loved how the uh, the packaging came and how I could it comes like this, and when you open it, bam! So I was just like, this is so cool. I'm gonna put it on my table for the video to display it in its glory. But anyway, if you don't have the uh, the high power rail, that's okay. Um, the adapter for the 4090 takes, uh, it's actually four eight pin connectors that merge into one of these high power connectors. So it does have an adapter. You can use traditional PCIe cables. If you have an older su power supply, don't worry. As long as it produces enough power, you're fine. You can still use this GPU. So yeah, let's, uh, I'm going to get my camera set up on the tripod. We'll do a little time lapse and I'll show you guys the finished product.
right guys, check it out. Just got done building this. Uh, everything's together. I gotta put the back plate and the uh, front tempered glass cover back on, but I wanted to just show you guys the build and we'll do the first startup here in a minute. Notice how absolutely massive this GPU is. I can't I can't wait to see what this thing can do. I really actually like the socket AM4 and AM5 because they come basically with a mounting plate adapter already on them, so you're all in one. It just has these hooks that hooks underneath those brackets and then you tighten it down and it's nice and nice and tight. Uh, the only thing that I messed up here is I probably should have plugged the CPU power cables in before I mounted the fans for the all-in-one because it was kind of tricky to get to the CPU, uh, the two eight pins for the CPU there. Not a big deal though. Um, got all the cables run nicely and neat in the back so you barely see anything. You just see the hoses for the all-in-one cooler. And of course you see this new PCIe 5 power connector which is a 600 watt power connector for the GPU. This GPU runs at 450 watts when it's running at full tilt. But what I really like about this is it just simplifies the cable management. Like you don't have to run two, three, or four eight pin PCIe connectors. And this connector, believe it or not, is actually smaller than the old traditional six to eight pin PCIe connectors. So super, super sick, really happy how this turned out. Of course, I have all my cable management done, so everything is routed through the back so we don't see anything ugly in the case. And uh, let's go ahead and fire it up. All right, guys, moment of truth. Oh yeah. Rams lighting up, very nice. All my fans are lighting up. RTX logo is not lighting up, I wonder why that is. You can see all the front rear fans, the Cooler Master logo on the all-in-one cooler, the RAM, and even the RGB LEDs for the for the all-in-one cooler uh, radiator are all lit up. Everything is blowing in the right direction. So I think I installed this all correctly. I'm gonna go ahead, get Windows installed, and we can uh, run some benchmarks. All right, guys, I got this all figured out. Let's do a startup. There's the NVIDIA GeForce RTX logo light up. So that's working nicely. All right. Hopping into Windows here. Already set the machine up, but as you can see, we have our as you can see we have our Ryzen 9 7950X processor, 128 gigs of RAM, all working properly. Uh, now I did run into a little snag, and I'll talk about that at the end because that might help some other people with DDR5 systems or socket AM5 systems. First, let's fire up the Heaven benchmark, and I can show you how much of a beast this GPU is because. Just, wow, it's powerful. I uh, hadn't really got to play with one of these yet, like I said. Um, I have an FPS counter in the top left, but you can also see the FPS counter here for the benchmark. It's in around 400 here, 500. Really, really good. Um, I haven't looked into any benchmarks that have uh, ray tracing, so this is more of a traditional graphics benchmark, but it has been around for a while. I I've been using it for years. I've used it on all my last builds and this far and away blows away the performance of my of my last machine uh you can see the gpu up here pegged at about 99 percent of course and the cpu not really breaking a sweat overall really happy with how the build turned out now with all that said guys i did run into a little bit of snag i can't tell if it's with all ddr5 systems or if it's something unique to socket AM5 systems, AMD machines. But Googling around, I saw that there's some memory tests that are performed the first time that you start one of these machines up. I actually thought I had a dead mainboard at first because as, as you saw earlier in the video, I powered it on, but my GPU's light didn't come on. And what I realized after I put the camera down was the DRAM light was lit up and I wasn't, it wasn't posting. I was, when I plugged it into a monitor, I wasn't getting a BIOS. So I was like, what is going on here? Now I'm used to my BIOS coming up within 10 seconds after pushing the power button. I mean, 10 seconds at the most. It turns out that because I have, the, the more RAM you have in these DDR5 systems, it performs a memory training step the first time that you turn it on. And it took six and a half minutes for this machine to post and show me the BIOS. Uh, it finally did, but I was like, okay, I can't deal with, you know, six, six and a half to seven minute boot times. This is crazy. Well, as it turns out, AMD had issued a firmware update that got integrated into all of the updated BIOS packages that all the different manufacturers offered. So what I did was I used ASUS's Quick BIOS Flash tool, which is super cool. You actually don't even have to turn 
the computer on and get to the BIOS and use the flash utility in the BIOS, what you can do is you can just put the BIOS on a FAT32 thumb drive and there's a special port on the back of these it's, it's a regular USB port, but it's marked BIOS. And if you plug it into that, there's a button right under it that if you hold it down, you'll see a light start flashing. And what that does is it actually flashes the BIOS. Now this is cool for two reasons. One, if you're in my situation where you don't wanna wait six and a half minutes for your BIOS to come up, you can just flash a newer BIOS on it. But two, you can also use it to recover your BIOS if you had a problem during uh, flashing, for example, because typically you'd have to ship your board back to the manufacturer. If I understand correctly, even if you bricked your BIOS, this would work and let you restore it, which is pretty cool because then you can kind of take care of that yourself if you had a, like say a power outage during a BIOS upgrade, right? That's a classic case where your BIOS is gonna get, gonna get bricked and you would have to ship your board out and have the manufacturer reflash the BIOS onto it. So it's, it's super cool that they have like a, a special dedicated USB port just for that. Worth noting, I don't believe you can use that USB as a regular USB port. So just be mindful of that. If you have one of these newer boards, the USB part, port marked BIOS, probably don't plug anything into that. But it's super cool that it has that feature. I was able to get my machine up and running. I've been enjoying it, been, uh, I, I was gaming on it last night, just kind of putting it through the paces. And I really haven't found anything yet that it broke a sweat on, but I'm playing older games, so that kind of makes sense. I'm excited to play some of the new triple, newer AAA titles. I even set my lighting up to be all NVIDIA green, so I can control all of the, uh, the RGB and ARGB lights with actually two different pieces of software, but the uh, Asus Armory controls all the ARGB stuff, and then Corsair IQ controls the Corsair uh, fan LED controller for the case fans. Pretty cool, got all that stuff matching, looks really cool, and uh, yeah, overall I'm just really happy with how it turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed this build. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Like and subscribe if you're into any of the stuff that I'm into, tech stuff, uh, music stuff, and of course car content. As usual, I hope this video is helpful, I hope this video is entertaining, and I'll see you guys next time.